Three days before entering the Jesuit seminary, I said to my parents, listen, I've decided to go to a Jesuit seminary. Those three days were very difficult for me because they cried all that time unable to understand what I was doing. Perhaps at the time, I myself did not understand too well what I was doing. It used to be much simpler. Young people did not have to give up so many comforts that have also become available here. Today they realize that to choose this road demands leaving behind many things. It's essentially a call to undertake a deep examination of one's conscience. Though not made at a very young age, I'm 28 years old, I describe my choice as a ripening of religious feelings. I had the opportunity to travel beyond Albania's borders and spent eight years in Switzerland. I tried to draw upon the best qualities of that religious milieu. I read Christian Catholic literature. I also read books from the other side, in other words, about how non-believers see the Catholic faith. I want my thoughts to be clear, to learn about the precepts of my faith, the path that man chooses. The Archdiocesan Spiritual Seminary, Institute of Philosophy and Theology in Škodra. Hope of the Albanian Church, first in the country after the fall of communism, run by Jesuits originally from Italy. The building itself was put up by charitable organizations such as Aid to the Church in Need. The teaching program is run on two levels, lower seminary and higher seminary, the equivalent of secondary and university level education. This wide-ranging teaching approach enables students to achieve a fuller and more mature evolution of their calling to the priesthood. Candidates are few, though from about 400,000 Catholics in Albania, one cannot expect too much, especially following on from the brutal years of communist rule and the systematic move to an atheist society. At the beginning, my mother passed on the faith to me as far as that was possible, because at the time of my birth, Albania declared itself the first atheist state. There were very few religious teaching aids, in effect only word of mouth, so the faith was passed on to me by my mother and mainly in hiding. I remember a certain crucifix in front of which my father always used to pray and which he always kept hidden. When father finished praying, the crucifix would disappear. He hid it because he was very much afraid. We were brought up in this atmosphere of fear of speaking freely with anybody. Having been brought up in a totalitarian regime taught me not to be too open or over-trusting. But in my opinion, there is also something else apart from the 50 years of communism. Getting to know the region or understanding it is difficult. È difficile conoscere, comprendere bene. Albanism is Albania's religion. The country's history evolved such that no religion had enough strength to bind the nation together. Albania was an example of a country divided along religious lines. To begin with, Constantinople's influence promoted the Orthodox faith, followed by Rome's spread of Catholicism, whilst the Turkish Empire introduced Islam by bloody means. These are the roots of an Albanocentric mentality that during times of greatest adversity in its history ensured the survival of Albania's national identity, but which, with the coming of communism, became warped by an ideal that rejected church and mosque in favor of nationalism. An atheist constitution was introduced in the name of national unity. Such wide-ranging acts led to the annihilation of religion throughout the country. 
The religious rebirth that followed the fall of communism led to another paradox. The shortage of clerics in Albania entailed the arrival of missionaries, a state of affairs that has given rise to feelings of distance amongst the faithful. A priest should be attached to the place of his birth or to people whose way of life and needs he understands better than most, rather than someone from another country, used to different customs and behavior. Many missionaries came to Albania following the regime's fall. Our parish was once again re-established. A parish priest also came to my village, who had earlier on been apprehended and sent to a forced labor camp. He's no longer alive. Other missionaries also immediately came from Italy and Malta, as well as other countries. I was very interested and keen to go and see to be among these people and to see how they live. I went out of interest. I had my first communion and confirmation in 1991. My first contacts were with Jesuit youth groups in Tirana, it was there that I developed close links with the Christian way of life. They were motivated by feelings of freedom, that at long last they could practice their chosen faith freely. But there was also a certain desire for revenge, of getting their own back, feelings that did not come from a calling based on pure motivations. Alla chiamata, diciamo, e quindi alle motivazioni più pure, no? Per esempio, we had problems with some people who, in spite of a great desire, did not possess the right personality to become priests. In a way, they had assimilated that that was the source of their suffering. Having been persecuted led them to the conviction that one could only change people by force, and so they would say, I will be exactly that, a strong priest portava anche a, a dire beh le maniere forti sono quelle che convincono e quindi io sarò un prete così forte I wanted to serve the Catholic Church in Albania, if only a little, because it had suffered more than other churches in Eastern Europe. It had its witnesses to the faith who had died because they had been priests, because they had not put the state before God. I thank God that I am now in Albania, and as a part of that tradition I strive to find my place in the Catholic Church. I thought of going to university a year after finishing school, but then I began to frequent my parish, and with time I was there more and more often. I remember I would often go out, my father wanted me to stay at home and work, fleeing to the parish to be with young people. I received my first Bible in Albanian, it was a beautiful present. I have it to this day, and it's still in very good condition.